Hi. Now let's discuss about the um, about the kidney. So understanding the basic anatomy of its functional unit of kidney, which is called nephron. You may heard about the uh, the the study of the kidney as a uh, academic discipline is called nephrology. So the neph uh, stands for the kidney, so that unit as a nephron. And we understand the basic process of underlying kidney function, which is one, filtration, two, reabsorption, and three, secretion. And we will talk about this more. And finally, understanding the biophysical processes responsible for regulation of filtration, which happens inside the glomerulus. So first of all, let's uh, bring some data here. So uh, in, in the kidneys. So first, um, there are a number of substances which passes through the kidney. And uh, let's look at the flow through renal arteries per day and flow through ureters, which directly uh, goes down to your, our bladder, which will come out as a pee per day. And the ratio through ureters with respect to total renal exposure as a percentage. First of all, the anatomic location of kidney is right uh, below the heart. So the cardiac output of, uh, from left ventricle through the aorta, this aortic arch goes down. And then one of them feeds to major organs including kidney. So kidney is quite close to the heart, so the pressure of these uh, renal arteries also very high. So let's take a look. The flow through renal artery per day is almost like 17, 30 liter, which is an enormous amount of blood. And we know that uh, inside the blood, if you centrifuge, about 40% uh, is uh, cells. Most of them are red blood cells. And the remaining 60% are more uh, a fluid element component of the blood, which we call plasma, blood plasma. So here, so if you multiply this by about 60% or 0.6, then you get about 950 liter. Think about the amount of kidney to filter a blood and plasma. Uh, this plasma is almost a thousand liter per day. That is a huge amount. And what's the final outcome through the kidney? It generates urine output and urine is mostly water. So let's see how much do you produce a urine a day? Yeah, that's about 1 to 1.5 liter per day. So this is what we see. And by about similar amount of uh, drink, we actually drink or through the food intake, we are taking about this so that we can make a uh, match about input and output. Of course, we are some, some uh, part we are generating by biochemical processes in the body generating some water, but this is about the, uh, the amount we are actually ingesting by drinking. And another very important um, role of the kidney is to keep the ionic balances in the body, which is very, very important for homeostasis uh, with, uh, for many organs and many processes in the body. So let's see how can we uh, do for these uh, critical ions, such as sodium, and through this plasma, sodium is 133,000 millimolar is passing through. And what comes finally through the ureters or to your bladder is only 103 millimolar, which is 0.16%, which is very small. And what about potassium? Like with the sodium and potassium, which makes a uh, concentration gradient inside and outside of the cell. 
So this forms a very important uh, physiological processes in our body. So keeping the concentration of this is very, very important. For example, in a neuron, um, so you know that the neuron communication with another neuron is through chemical synapse and the sending out the signal is through the so-called action potential, which is process uh, uh, which is maintained by the on and off opening of the ion channels, such as sodium and potassium channels. And inside the cell and outside the cell, the concentration of sodium and potassium ions are almost one order of magnet, 10 times different. To keep that, we have to have a hardworking ion channel on the cells. And so the amount of this keeping the ion, ionic concentration in the interstitium is very important. And that is kind of controlled by the kidney. So here the potassium is over 3,800 millimole and eventually it comes out ureter at 50 millimole, which is also less than 0.1%, which is a remarkable. And what about other uh, ions, such as bicarbonate, HCO3 minus? Bicarbonate does a very important role to keep our pH in the, our body fluid. And look at this. This is almost 0.01% less than this is coming out after through the kidney. So what happens here? So this is very important. Uh, but the other example of something which is small enough and uh, we don't want it because if it accumulates in the body that it can be toxic. It's toxic in fact. So the urea is we are keep generating by processing protein and and urea is a very small molecule with a molecular weight of 60.6. .6. So per day, about 475 gram of urea passes to the kidney and the kidney eventually secretes them about 52 gram of this urea through the ureter, of course, inside our urine. So that's about 11%. So we can consider this urea as a very small one, which is purely secreted, uh, uh, filtered through the kidney. Okay, so kidney's important function is a homeostasis in terms of sodium, water, and potassium. And we see kidneys are taking care of this concentration, sodium, water, potassium. Do you know whether you are actually measuring how much of water to drink and sodium. You don't and I don't. And somehow these are contained in our food, usually more, maybe more than enough. And how does this keep maintained in our body? And that is thanks to the kidney's role, okay? So first, what if the kidney is just simple filter um, uh, for water. So example, the urea is a, a small molecule which seems to pass it through about 11%. So what if the kidney only has something like this simple filter, just filters 11%. Then look at this, per day, the blood plasma, of plasma which is waterly part of the blood, 950 liter. If 11% is filtered, and going down to the ureter, to our bladder, for us to pee, then this is about almost 100 liter per day. So what does that mean? Our life can be uh, miserable because we have a bladder of about half liter bladder then to make this water to come out of our body 100 liter, we have to go to pee over 200 times a day, which is, you know, very, very, would be very annoying. And at the same time, also we have to replenish the water by drinking 100 liters of water, which is almost insane. So to solve this, kidney has its own solution. So the first to make this is a filtration. 
filter is just based on these holes and small holes of bigger molecule, most of the protein cannot pass through, but smaller molecule and ions can pass through. So to produce the fluid will become urine is filtration. And second, you know, because of this, we can see, or we can just filter 11% of all the water inside our blood plasma, no. So to reclaim water and these vital chemicals, ion, from the ultra filter, which means uh, the kidneys filtration, we call ultra filtration, uh, I'll tell you why, and that we want to reclaim back to our blood. So that's via reabsorption function of the kidney. And also sometimes uh, some chemicals from the blood, uh, in the blood we don't need it, so we can just you know, put it back to the, the urine and that we call, uh, it has to be selective and selective secretion. So for that, let's start with a big picture of the kidney functional anatomy. So first, our urinary system, we have both left and right kidneys, and that goes to collect the urine through this ureter, and the ureter goes down to a collecting place, which is a urinary bladder. And of course, in the bladder to the outside is connected, we call as a urethra. So uh, these are the kidney anatomy. So you already probably know. So let's just uh, review them. So the outside has to be strong to keep this kidney content. So that's a fibrous capsule, uh, which is made out of fiber. Of course, it's probably collagen fiber. So outer part, of the kidney we call as a cortex. And it's like in our brain, we also call outer uh, part as a cortex. And the inner part, there's an interesting pyramidal shape and that we call a medulla. And inside a, a, a renal sinus and renal vein and artery provides a blood into the kidney and out of the kidney. Of course, those are filtered urine will be collected down as a, a, through the ureter. So you can notice that uh, even kidney is a, an organ which we do transplant uh, for those who have a kidney failure. So uh, somehow kidney is a, mm, relatively easy and simple in that regard because you see there's a one renal artery and one renal vein connected. So each kidney is connected with one artery and one vein. And think about the renal blood flow. So from the heart, we know that cardiac output is about five liters per minute. And almost 20% uh, of the blood directly goes to the kidney. So that renal blood flow is one liter per minute, which is an enormous amount of our cardiac output. So that means kidney is very functioning, very important role of filtering our blood. And how about not blood, but the liquid portion of the blood which is being filtered because we are not filtering that big cells. So we only consider the plasma. And that is by our uh, knowledge of hematocrit about 40%, the rest 60% will be renal plasma flow. We can define it as 0.6 liter per minute. So as we say, the functional unit, the smallest functional unit of the kidney is called the nephron. And the, um, so this, I brought some of this uh, kidney's uh, nephron picture. So you look at it, so kidney renal artery will branch down, branch down, branch down into a smallest one, which is arterial, meaning that small artery. So there comes an afferent arterial, meaning that this is getting into this uh, kidney's um, uh, nephron, and they have a filtration function happening here so-called uh, glomerulus, and then they come out, and come out is called efferent arterial. 
you notice that both are arterial and arterial flow. These are uh, glomerular capillary. So it sounds a little bit strange. But let's think of that later. And but look at this inside, this uh, bigger uh, green are proteins. And proteins usually are a bigger molecule uh, and they don't suppose come out of uh, kidney in this filtration. So you know that if urine contains protein that we call a proteinuria, which is a sign of something like kidney failure and not good news. So protein will not come out of this filtration in general. And, but you see the smaller molecules, which because this is a, a, a filter, simple filter that it passes through. So the concentration even are the same in it outside of this. So that's we call glomerular ultrafiltrate and there will be collected. And this is called Bowman's capsule. And why both? But this is a one side, so I want to give you a little big picture of this uh, nephron that um, these glomerulus is here and from kinesia, renal arteries, efferent, afferent arterial gets in and then going out. Why it's called efferent arterial? Because there's a capillary downwards. So that's why it's still arterial and the capillary will be interacting with proximal tumor. Proximal meaning that it's closer to the glomerulus and the loop of Henry, then it goes back to here so that it also interact with the uh, capillaries and we call it now uh, distal tuber. And this will become uh, this blood, which is uh, after this capillary will become vein. All right, so now I guess you understand why this is called afferent and efferent, both are arterial, because the downstream, there will be actual capillary network where reabsorption and secretion happens and they become a vein. What's very interesting in the kidney uh, like ultrastructure is uh, it's uh, ways how to filter our blood. So filtration in the glomerular capillary beds are very interesting. So you see uh, these are glomerular capillary. So the capillary inside is glomerulus, which is a, a functional unit of the nephron. And look at this capillary. Capillary is a lot of hole. So this is a little different from elsewhere. So that we call fenestrated capillary, meaning that there's a, a lot of this hole because it has to filter out the uh, blood. And interesting, outside of the, the, uh, the capillary, capillary outside, there's another interesting type of cell called the podocyte. And look at their interdigitating uh, shapes. And that functions also as a filtration slits. Now let's look at in more electron microscope of the cross section. For the cross section, we uh, we can make um, tens of nanometer, very thin uh, layer of this section, and then we watch through electron microscope. So we call this as a trans transmission electron microscope, which is usually a cross section cut of uh, these uh, structures, so that you can see. Because of this red blood cell, we notice that these are a luminal side of the, of the glomerular capillary. And you see inside there's a little thing of like this cellular component. So these are uh, endothelial cells. So capillary endothelium. And look at this endothelium, there's a hole in it. So that's kind of interesting part. So this endothelial, is not uh, maybe tight, but it also contains a lot of holes for filtration. And endothelial cells are sit on these prominent basement membrane. What's interesting is outside the shape, you see these uh, slit-like shape, which is formed by these podocytes. So that's called filtration slits. 
And let's look at this uh, uh, from the outside, like this, um, this picture. So that is uh, the picture from the outside. Look at this, it's amazingly interdigitating podocytes and that forms a um, numerous filtration slits around glomerular capillaries.